Hola, buenas tardes. Primero disculpa. Good afternoon. I'm sorry for the delay. We started to eat and eat and eat and really uh, we didn't notice the time. And also I was um, waiting for my son to get here and I think he's caught in a traffic jam. Dr. Rodriguez Pare, who's an expert, much more of an expert than I am, will be giving a talk also um, after mine, and I'm sure you'll find his presentation equally interesting. I would like to mention, in regard to what I said the other day, on how dangerous adaptation might be. Adaptation to toxins, adaptation to chemicals, I believe that we shouldn't adapt to them. We've heard that, well, I found out that it's very, it wasn't good to adapt to certain circumstances because medicine has become automated, it has become dehumanized and I was also affected by that. And, and um, Dr. Rea also knows, thanks to him, I, my life was saved because also I was practically dying and, and went to Dallas and a plane, and thanks to um, Dr. Rea, um, I'm alive now. So I'm trying to recover medicine and make medicine a different one different from the medicine that I know now. When I was 14 or 15 years old, I had, for the first time, heard my teacher of biology say, and I was um, young and I hadn't heard about cells at that time, and I was really impressed when she started um, te speaking about cells. My biology, my biology, biology teacher started speaking about cells, and I thought that, well, that's um, similar to what my friends have ta talked to me about, um, being in love with someone, having a boyfriend, and because I felt the same way, I became in love, I fell in love with biology, with cells, and I started, I started um, becoming more and more interested in the cells of the human body, and that's how my vocation started. I began to lose what I had felt at that time. This first um, inter interest and first love with medicine. Medicine is something alive, not mechanic, not automatic, not automated. And when I had this um, MCS, once again, I recovered this passion, this interest in medicine once again. I told Raquel that when I was so ill, I told her that I woke up suddenly and I said that, well, I want to start to study medicine again. The human part of medicine, I wanted to recover that. So I started to study cells more in depth. I started to study all of the elements in the cells, the mitochondria, DNA, etc., and do a lot of research work. And I started with um, biochemistry, with molecules, atoms, and little by little, you get more and more involved in the cells and in unraveling the mystery we have before us. So having said that, um, enzymes that I'll be discussing um, during my presentation is also one of my uh, fields of interest. Uh, uh, when we're building a house, you have a lot of people involved. You have plumbers, you have carpenters, electricians. In medicine also, um, you have all of these different elements. And one of the elements that we have is the enzyme. They know when they have to um, take action. And all of the process of biotransformation, well, most of the biotransformation process 
processes depend on enzymes. And these are really basic, uh, basic concepts. And we have other experts who, who can address this better than I can, but I'll try to give you some idea about toxic injury and biotransformation enzymes. Everything undergoes metabolic transformation. All of the compounds that enter the organism, they are either absorbed, assimilated, and those that are not assimilated are compartmentalized. They are kept in the cells, and then later on they're eliminated. Some of them remain. The xenobiotics remain because they are metabolized to reduce their toxicity. And nutrients are metabolized to maintain the energy. And nutrients or, or um, chemical compounds um, that are necessary for the metabolism of a living being. Metabolism of nutrients. Um, nutrients enter um, via um, different routes. They are transported and utilized by the cells to obtain energy. And then they are eliminated. Most of them are eliminated through the liver and through, uh, through phase one and phase two. The xenobiotics, all of the chemical compounds that form part of the composition of the living organisms. So these are the xenobiotics. Um, they are usually um, pollutants. They are lipophilic. They easily cross the biological membranes, and they are difficult to secrete, excrete. Now, metabolization of xenobiotics. The route of entry can be through the gut or through the respiratory tract. Nutrients that are used for our anabolism, these occupy a space. Instead of giving energy, it consumes, consumes more energy leading to metab metabolic changes, generation of um, la free radicals, immune response, and cell injury. When they are eliminated, they, they produce bioactivation processes and sometimes some induction of cytochrome P450. When our organism has excessive amounts of xenobiotics, xeno xeno more of these are formed so that they can be eliminated. When the xenobiotics enter the organism, they adapt to these. Adaptation depends on inducible deintoxication, such as the cytochrome P450. It begins to release more amounts to detoxicate. And the um, SOD is an important enzyme also. Um, there is um, re reinforcement of the permeable mem membranes that has to be a uh, appropriate. Integrity of the membranes um, will re be. The integrity of the membranes is repaired while there are nutrients. These membranes, uh, with great amount of um, toxic material, there is m it becomes more difficult to repair. Xenobiotics, uh, most of them are metabolized in blood. Then they are distributed to tissues, but this depends on the physical and chemical characteristics, binding to um, plasma proteins, blood groups, etc. Once they have this, after this, they go through the phase one reaction stage, and the they're converted into um, water-soluble substances so that they can be easily um, eliminated. Then we go through the phase two reactions, and uh, this will be discussed more in depth by Dr. Rodriguez Fare. Detoxication of xenobiotics occur 
through immune mechanisms, through immune mechanisms, or non-immune mechanisms. Immune mechanisms through reaction of hypersensitivity type 1, 2, 3, and 4, for, or through non-immune mechan mechanisms uh, through catalytic enzymatic reactions. And you have the non-catalytic reactions, and uh, this converts the xenobiotics into substances that are less toxic. For instance, nitric oxide plus cysteine and cysteine. cysteine. Um, this leads to a conversion of S nitrocysteine, which is less toxic. Enzymes are biological catalysts of protein nature. They act here, as shown in this drawing, in the enzyme, the substrate. This binds to the active site of the enzyme to convert the substrate into products, and the product is released. Here we have the classification of enzymes according to structure. They may be simple, protein structure, conjugated. Protein structure plus cofactor, where you have an inorganic ion or organic molecule such as um, amino acid coenzyme or, or other coenzymes. You have six families, the hydrolases, transferases, that transfer active groups into other receptor molecules, lyases, that catalyzes um, reactions where groups are eliminated through um, excision from the link to form a, a double link. The oxidoreductases that act in the respiratory chain, they produce some um, electron transfer of one molecule to another, the isomerases, isomerases, and finally, ligases, where there can be binding of smaller molecules to become bigger molecules. Reactions that catalyze enzymes in different processes of the organism. This occurs through different processes, oxidation, reduction, degradation, a breakdown or conjugation, and this occur in blood, in liver, intestine, the biotransformation of xenobiotics, the type of reactions are listed here. The phase two, um, after following phase two, they can become secre excreted. There are many pathways for metabolisms of compounds that may be injured by toxic burden. You have classification, this was taken from Dr. Ria's work, and you have um, acids, aldehydes, alcohols, set, set, uh, ketones, esters, ethers, um, nitro compounds, etc. And they, um, there's usually a change of six types of um, substances that are less toxic, uh, that occurs through oxidation, reduction, hydrolysis. There's six compounds are finally conjugated into what I have listed here. Um, the factors that affect um, enzyme activity. We have um, different factors of conjugation, elimination of these different processes. Um, that can alter these are environmental factors, physical factors, chemical factors. Um, you can have um, inhib inhibitors which are specific or non-specific. Inhibitors are substances that bind to the enzymes and reduce enzyme activity. They may be non-specific inhibitors, such as um, those um, that denatures the mm, substance 
of the enzyme. Then you have inhibitors, specific inhibitors. They may be irreversible, as you can see here. They enter the enzyme, it al they alter the enzyme, and this cannot be recovered because the structure of the enzyme has been changed. Then you have the reversible inhibitors. Um, which allows recovery of the function of the enzyme. Interaction, what occurs when there's an interaction? And the injury can be produced. There can be interference of enzyme activity, as I said. There can be interference of general function of the cell because of accumulation membranes, interference of the protein synthesis, DNA and RNA, injury by blockade of the transport capacity of oxygen in hemoglobin. Once there's injury in the cells, we will also have injury to the organism because we have many cells can be affected. We may have carcinogenesis, uh, mutagenesis, nephrotoxicity, hepatotoxicity, etc. Enzymes in implicated in MCS. There are about 2,000 enzymes, if I remember correctly. As far as I believe, there are 2,000 that have been, have been involved. I have taken here the most important ones, particularly for uh, cases with um, MCS. These are the antioxidant enzymes, um, dismutase, superoxide, superoxide dismutase, SOD, and catalase. SOD is an important enzyme. It is an antioxidant. It catalyzes the dismutation of superoxide. It is very harmful for the organism, as uh, Professor Martin Paul said, has said. And this is a very potent um, antioxidant and very harmful. This is catalyzed to produce um, H2O2. They use copper, zinc, manganese, or iron as cofactors, depending on whether they are in cytoplasm, mitochondria, or extracellular um, fluid. In Dallas, it has been shown that these enzymes are high in the moderately sensitive patients and depressed in the severe cases. Inhibitors, cyanine, pycyanine. This is curious, really, because it's an element produced by Pseudomonas aeruginosa, a bacteria. Um, this is also seen in kerosene, gas oil, and they produce oxidative stress and death. You have um, streptonigrine, it's a cytotoxic antibiotic. And there, you have um, janglona, they're present in um, uh, fungicides, in dyes, etc., methylene blue, etc. Catalases, they are other enzymes, another antioxidant. They catalyze the um, breakdown of um, H2O2 in oxygen and water. This also um, avoids the injury that H2O2 can produce in the organism. In the active site, you have amino acids, ASN147, and HIS74. The enzyme is uh, found in the peroxisomes. They can uh, produce oxidation of different toxins such as formaldehyde and um, these are very sensitive they are very sensitive to formaldehyde and also to phenols and alcohols they're usually at high levels in those that are uh, mild with mild uh, chemical sensitivity then you have other inhibitors here such as amino triazole phylates phosphates um, polyphenols Absence of reduction, the congenital absence of reduction of catalase is cause of acatalysemia, autosomal recessive. In switch, uh, if this enzyme is not present to eliminate H2O2, what we have is is that they cannot, this bacteria cannot be attacked and they can proliferate. Uh, that's the Swiss form. The Japanese form, uh, reduced synthesis or reduction of the activity of the enzyme can lead to infections, particularly those localized in the mouth. 
Glutathione peroxidase catalyzes the oxidation reaction of glutathione to disulfur glutathione. You have two glutathione plus some H2O2 leading to disulfur glutathione plus 2H2O. Selenium, if it is reduced, what well, this enzyme work in worse conditions. Um, those that are have a, um, MCS, their selenium level is low. It's, it's one of the main defenses of the body against the destructive effects of other elements. This enzyme is high in those that are moderately sensitive and low in those that are severely sensitive. So the amount of enzyme is raised in an attempt to detoxicate, to um, lower the degree of severity of the sensitivity of the patients. You have inhibitors, heavy metals, um, alkali alkylating agents, etc. Cytochrome P450 belongs to a superfamily of um, hemoproteins associated to the membranes where they act by metabolizing endogenous and exogenous um, substances. They make them this much more um, water soluble so that they can be um, excreted or eliminated easily. Um, other co um, cofactors used are B3, B2, copper. The active um, site has an iron atom associated um, to this group. It is present mainly in the liver, also in the GI tract, lung, um, kidneys, and uh, family one, two, and three are are comprised of these enzymes. They provide temporary protection against some chemicals. The induction of enzyme has occurred previously. This uh, permits protection. The organism, when it is exposed to toxins, it attempts to produce more amounts of this enzyme. They, are, they uh, produce more of these substances, and after some time, apparently, although apparently um, they do not en do anything, um, um, there are changes because of the changes in their levels. If these um, cytochrome systems are stimulated and utilized in excess, they become depleted or are suppressed by the chemicals, leading to poor response. Adaptation is interrupted and the person becomes ill. Once the cytochromes are not used, they, are, they become eliminated occasionally problems with elimination arise, and this facilitates the generation or um, enhancement of um, MCS or exacerbation of MCS. There are many processes for biotransformation. You have alcohols, aldehydes, and ketones. They are generally in the organism. If we take alcohol, exogenous alcohol, aldehydes, or ketones, there can be oversaturation. For instance, for alcohol, they become metabolized and, de and degrade aldehydes, break down aldehydes or um, ketones. Aldehydes will also be broken down by lipid peroxidation and um, biogenic amines. The alcohols to become aldehydes, um, DH alcohol is required. Now, aldehyde to become alcohol, it's necessary to have DH aldehyde. Primary alcohols, some secondary and tertiary alcohols are oxidated by strong oxidating agents. 
and can use or not dehydrogenase alcohol enzyme. The end products and the metabolic end products of some alcohols are sometimes much more toxic than their precursors. Dehydrogenase alcohol is this group of enzymes that catalyzes and convert aldi, um, alcohols into aldehydes and ketones. This is important. We see people that may have zinc deficit. Also, that's seen also in MCS. We have to determine the level of enzymes, of these enzymes. And um, toxic overburden can lead to injury of nutrients B2, B3. The most com common routes for metabolization most common pathways for metabolization of alcohol is shown here. Those that are alcoholic um, know that there's also a physical problem. This means that ethanol becomes acetaldehyde, and acetaldehyde is converted to acetate and eliminated through respiration into CO2 or H2O. Production of dehydrogenase alcohol due to increased metabolism, that is, there's induction of more amount of this enzyme, or because of injury, it's this enzyme that um, blocks this step, leads to an increase of acetaldehyde that's very toxic in the organism and crosses the blood brain barrier. Some studies have shown that they can bind to some neurotransmitters in the brain and because it crossed the blood-brain barrier, such as epinephrine and norepinephrine, leading to THIQ. This is a, a compound um, that is produced, and it's a molecule that has affinity to the opiate receptors. Dehydrogen aldehyde and um, oxidase aldehyde. The dehydrogen aldehyde it's the enzyme that catalyzes reduction of aldehydes into alcohols. Oxidase aldehyde is the enzyme that catalyzes oxidation of aldehydes into uh, carboxylic acids. Because of excess of, of intermediate metabolites produced in the body um, through all the processes of biotransformation, there'll be large amounts of aldehydes produced. This excess makes um, aldehyde um, saturated. The catabolic um, pathways of aldehydes become saturated, which reverts alcohol through um, DH aldehyde and re alcohol reductase. Many patients, MCS, develop a state of somnolence, um, confusion, um, this is what happens also in those that are uh, that take alcohol. And they may also become lethal exposure to um, phenobarbital, and some herbicides lead to in an increased induction of um, the aldehyde dehydrogenase. Aldehyde reductase, enzyme that catalyzes the reduction of a wide variety of aldehydes and carbonyl compounds, including monosaccharides. The ketone reductase are enzymes that catalyze reduction of ketones into alcohols. They catalyze a large variety of xenobiotic ketones, aromatic, aliphatic, alicyclic, present in pesticides and other products. Reductase depend on B3 content containing a NADPH as coenzyme. 
if they're present in the brain, there can be an excess production of aldehyde. And that may also explain some of the um, brain involvement in patients that have MCS. Santine oxidase, enzyme catalysis, uh, hyposantine into santine through oxidation and may catalyze um, santine to, into uric acid purines through oxidation. When we see when they are detected in, in blood, this is an indication of liver injury because they are normally localized to the liver and the liver. These enzymes, when they're injured, the capacity, um, incapacity to tolerate them compounds occur, compounds that contain santine, such as coffee or chocolate. Monoamino oxidase are enzymes that catalyze oxidation of monoamines and the breakdown of amine neurotransmitters, transmitters, transmitters, serotonin, noradrenaline. When this enzyme is injured, that um, that's also seen in uh, many patients with MCS. They have um, depress depressive states. Algunos algunos inhibidores. Some other inhibitors, COMT enzyme. This is catechol O methyl transferase that intervene in other uh, processes in the breakdown of um, catecholamine neurotransmitters. Variation, the main variations of this enzyme are VAL158 and MET158. 50% of the population. I mean, 50% of the population, they are in the Valmet form, and 25% population have the Valval -val, um, type. And 25% pop population, they have the Met, Met variety. And they are capable of um, um, catalyzing and breaking down um, catecholamines in those that in those um, in those that are are not excited these um, enzymes are usually present and later on there's this uh, important toxicity produced in the organism and these neurotransmitters become um, degraded for instance uh, Adrenaline, if it remains in the organ organism for a long time, it might be oxidated and converted into adrenochrome. It is a molecule that can produce um, psychotic outbreaks. The um, glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase is found in all living beings. They transport red blood cells so that they can work properly. That's their main function. There is hemolysis when exposed to toxins and drugs or infection. Conclusions. When we have excess of toxic agents, the organism tends to produce enzymatic induction. This process requires synthesis of proteins, de novo, that has already been altered in the chemically sensitive subject. The continuous stimulation or overload can lead to depletion of the system with leading to um, chemical exacerbation of chemical sensitivity. Genes should function correctly for induction to occur with the adequate protein and to pro produce the appropriate response in the patients with sensitivity. These genes may be injured or defective.
Induction may be rapid or slow. We've seen that in MCS, um, the, the, this occurs slowly because they're slow acetylators. By synthesis of enzymes as well as break, their breakdown may be altered, it may be delayed detoxific detoxication. I think um, we will not have time to address these other issues. We have here a list of chemical compounds, organic and inorganic ones, each one uh, with the enzymes uh, that are injured. Here is the list of the literature. Thank you.